Let's look at a real must be true question and we'll start as always with a question stem. Which one of the following can be properly inferred from the information above? So anchoring this to what we learned and most strongly supported, notice it's sort of the same thing because I haven't shown you the stimulus yet, but based on the stimulus, based on the information and stimulus, that's how we're selecting the answer. But it's different from most strongly supported because the criteria is different. We're looking at a proper inference now. What do they mean by properly inferred? Well, what they mean by that is must be true. Stated differently, that means if the information in the stimulus is true, the correct answer choice must be true. So let's take a look at the information in the stimulus. The calm, shallow waters of coastal estuaries are easily polluted by nutrient-rich sewage. When estuary waters become over-nutrified as a result, as a result of pollution by nutrient-rich sewage, when that happens, algae proliferate. The abundant algae, in turn, sometimes provide a rich food source for microorganisms that are toxic to fish, thereby killing most of the fish in the estuary. Okay, so this is just a set of causally linked facts, right? Or you can view this as a big, complex phenomenon. At the very start of this, you have nutrient-rich sewage that finds its way into the calm, shallow waters of coastal estuaries. Now, when that happens, when the sewage finds its way into uh, the coastal estuaries, the waters become over-nutrified. And when that happens, algae proliferate, which in turn get eaten up by microorganisms, which in turn kill fish this long causal chain of events. All right, so take all of this to be true. Let's look at the answers. So once again, here's the spectrum. We're gonna try to uh, place each of our answers along the spectrum. Because we're doing a must be true question, the correct answer choice has to fall on this end of the spectrum. So let's take a look. A says fish in an estuary that has been polluted by sewage are generally more likely to die from pollution and then our fish in an estuary that has been polluted in some other way. Now, before you can make a decision about where to place this, you, of course, have to understand this claim first. What kind of claim is this? It's something we've talked about before and something that is heavily repeated on the LSAT in logical reasoning. It's a comparative claim, okay? It's a comparative claim. We are comparing what against what? Fish, that's the subject. But is it any kind of fish? Unmodified, unconstrained? Nope. Right, you see, they say fish in an estuary. Any kind of estuary? Nope. Embedded modifier. That's been polluted by sewage. You see, this is how the embedding works. We're talking about fish in an estuary. What kind of estuary? Estuary that's been polluted by sewage. So that kind of fish. Fish in an estuary that's been polluted by sewage. Right? That's the kind of fish we're talking about. That's the subject. Here comes a predicate. Our generally more likely to die from pollution than, so you have to have another subject, than our fish, again, being modified in an estuary, this time the estuary gets a different modifier that has been polluted in some other way, right? So we're comparing fish in an estuary polluted by sewage against fish in an estuary polluted by non-sewage, something else. We're comparing these two on what, right? These are the two subjects that you can see get modified. We're comparing them on which one is more likely to die from pollution. I have no idea which one is more likely to die from pollution. Even appealing to common sense, you know this has to turn on what kind of pollution you're talking about. To take an extreme example, if it's nuclear waste you're talking about, I'm pretty sure the fish that's getting polluted by nuclear waste, non-sewage, in other words, that's the one that's going to be more likely to die. Okay, but, you know, that's not appealing to anything in the, uh, in the passage. It's just appealing to facts that we know about the world. Okay, but having done this analysis, you know A is not the right answer. Where would you put A on this spectrum? I mean, it doesn't contradict the information in here because nothing in here gives us anything to compare sewage pollution to any other kind of pollution. But it's also not in any way supported by the information in the passage. So you would put A right over here. It's merely consistent with information about it. Could be true, 
could be false. Now we'll look at B. In estuary waters that contain abundant algae, microorganisms that are toxic to fish reproduce more quickly than other types of microorganisms. Again, before we figure out where B goes on this spectrum, we first have to understand what B is saying. Very similar A, right? Grammatically, very similar A. It's also a comparative claim. Now, the difference is that we set out a domain. We're not talking about microorganisms that are proliferating on your kitchen sponge, right? We're talking about in estuary waters modified that contain abundant algae. So first lay out the domain. We're talking about estuary waters, not all of them, just the subset of estuary waters that contain abundant algae. Okay, AA for contain abundant algae. Now within that domain, now we get to do the comparison. What's the noun? Microorganisms. All microorganisms? No, modified. Microorganisms that are toxic to fish, right? That's the kind of microorganism that we are comparing that are toxic to fish against what? Skip the predicate, skip the verb, okay? Compared to other types of microorganisms, meaning microorganisms that are not toxic to fish. Okay, those are the two, right? That's the two types of microorganisms, the two objects that we're comparing. What are we comparing them on? Now you look to the predicate to the verb. Well, which one reproduces more quickly, right? Which one reproduces more quickly? Faster reproduction, faster big R for reproduction. And, you know, the claim is saying that this one reproduces more quickly. So that finishes the grammar analysis, the comparative analysis. So now we understand what the statement is saying. Now we have to, well, hopefully you see this is just not right. We do know that the microorganisms which are toxic to fish, sure they reproduce. For sure they reproduce. It's a rich food source, so they reproduce. I'm sure they reproduce and they kill the fish, right, that are toxic to the fish. But that doesn't mean they reproduce more or less quickly than other types of microorganisms. This algae that becomes abundant, okay, they are a rich food source for microorganisms modified that are toxic to fish. Are they also a rich food source for microorganisms that are not toxic to fish? Possibly. And we just have no information about that. So you cannot compare the rate of reproduction of this thing against really anything else. So in the end, B also lands right over here along with A. Could be true, could be false. I just don't have any evidence that would suggest one way or the other. C says, nutrients and other components of sewage do not harm fish in coastal estuaries in any way other than through the resulting proliferation of toxic microorganisms. Now, on first blush, this might seem like a comparative statement, but it's better understood as a limit, a statement trying to limit something. Like I can say, I do not drink any kind of soda other than Coke. Well, what have I just said? I've said that all I drink is Coke. The only soda I drink is Coke. Right? I mean, maybe I drink other things like water or wine or whatever, but like the soda, in terms of soda, all I drink. So do you see what I mean? It's not really a comparison. They're just saying of all the things in sewage, nutrients and other components of sewage, right? You, you take this big idea of sewage and you break it down into constituent parts, right? which is not gross at all to think about. And they're saying, you know, think of all the different components of sewage. None of them harm fish, right? None of them harm fish. It's only through this mechanism of feeding the algae, which in turn feed the microorganism, that the fish get harmed. In other words, it's indirect harm. These different components of sewage, they inherently, directly, on their own, are not harmful to fish. It's only because algae love to eat them up, and in turn, these microorganisms eat up the algae, and it's those microorganisms that harm fish. So you see, it's downstream, it's indirect harm. That's what C is claiming. Now, what we know for sure is that sewage cause indirect harm to fish, because we just laid that out. But what we don't know at all, and that's why C isn't right, is whether sewage directly also harm fish. Could it be that even in the absence of algae, even in the absence of these microorganisms, just having sewage in waters would on its own kill fish because the sewage itself is just toxic to fish? The answer to that question, if you were to seek it in the stimulus, would lead you nowhere. 
because the stimulus just doesn't talk about it. Do you see? So based on the information in the stimulus, you cannot say that sewage doesn't have any direct harm to fish because you just don't know. So just like A and B, C joins its ranks. It sits right over here. It's merely information consistent with the passage. Could be true. Could be false. We don't know. D says algae will not proliferate in coastal estuaries that are not polluted by nutrient-rich sewage. So with a word that we know this is modifier of the kind of coastal estuary we're talking about, the non-sewage polluted kind, right? Or actually, it's even more specific than that. It's the non-rich sewage polluted kind. We're saying in that kind of coastal estuary, algae won't proliferate. Well, once again, we just don't know if that's true on the basis of this information. This information tells us that sewage that, or sorry, estuaries, coastal estuaries that are polluted by nutrient-rich sewage, algae will proliferate. Okay, fine, but could algae proliferate under other conditions? Big fat question mark. We just don't know. This answer choice is trying to trick you into making this mistaken assumption of thinking that when one cause is revealed, that means there are no other causes. Now, they revealed one cause of algae proliferation, which is the nutrient-rich sewage pollution of coastal estuaries. That's one cause of algae proliferation for sure, guaranteed, right? Because they just tell you. Okay, they're saying now that I've told you that here's a cause of algae proliferation, I want you to presume that there are no other causes. Right? I mean, if that's true, if there are no other causes, then yeah, algae won't proliferate. That's the only way that algae. But come on, you know that's not how causes and effects work. For any given cause, there could be multiple effects. For any given effect, there could be multiple causes. Just because you're told one causal link doesn't mean you get to preclude all other potential causes. So D joins the ranks of the other wrong answer choices right over here. It could be true or it could be false. We just don't know. And finally, we're down to answer choice E, which by process elimination we know it has to be right. But why? Over neutrifying estuary waters by sewage can result in the death of most of the fish in the estuary. Why must E be true? What about this allows for E to be what's called a proper inference? In other words, must be true. It's because of the causal chain. We know that. Over neutrifying estuary waters result in algae proliferation. We know, in turn, algae proliferation sometimes provide a rich food source for microorganisms, which in turn kill most of the fish in estuary. So we know that this sometimes happens. This causal chain from A to B to C to D is sometimes happens. This answer choice jumps from A to D, and it links A to D with can. Can result. It's very important you pay attention to the kind of link the answer choice is establishing between A and D. If it said over neutrifying estuary waters by sewage always result in the death of most fish in the estuary, then we cannot pick this answer choice because we don't know if it always results. We know. I mean, the chain gets broken. What from over neutrifying to algae, from algae to Microorganism. See, like the A to B, the B to C link is a sometimes link, not an always link. But the answer choice recognizes that, right? This answer choice recognizes that and respects that. That's why they didn't say always. They said can, right? They could have said something more. They could have said sometimes, right? More than just can. Sometimes it happens, right? This is just merely, you know, when you say can, you're just merely preserving the. Potential of the thing to happen. You're preserving the possibility of the thing to happen. You could have gone one step further and not just say, "Oh, well, it's not just that it can happen. Sometimes it actually, in fact, happens." That would have been fine too, because you know, again, that matches the connection made in the stimulus. Okay, so do you do you see why this is this is a very high standard to meet? When the information in the stimulus is true, the correct answer choice must be true. 